All right, well, it is, I have 903, and I will call the December Personnel and Bargaining Committee meeting to order. Um, we have a 15 item agenda. Uh, I certify that it, uh, open meeting law requirements have been met with proper posting. We have a 15 item agenda. I look for a move to adopt. Move to approve. Motion by I'll second. Motion. Second by Nutter. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. Hey, Heather's on too, good. So aye. we're, we're It took me a minute to now. get signed on. <laughs> yes. That's okay. Um, so next we have um, any, we are approval of minutes from previous meetings. So any corrections or additions from the November 17th committee meeting? Hmm. From the committee. I moved to approve. Okay, motion by Austin to approve. Second, I'll second. Johnson. Okay. Um, all in favor, say aye. All right. Aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. So, we have item number five. Do we want to wait on that until we have... Yes, uh, I done. thought Deb Suklo was going to be here for this one, so we will come back to this one. So. Okay. Well, let, let's uh, we'll come back to item number five and go move on to six discussion possible action on confirmed part-time fill-in employees are covered by cola increase. There was a question. Um, Kayla had a question. There wasn't anything in the notes or the minutes. She just wanted to confirm before she filled out the paperwork that the committee intended that the part-time and fill-in employees were also covered by the COLA increase that was approved by the committee. The understanding, and I talked to Krista, the understanding is yes, but again, it wasn't in any minutes, so we just wanted to clarify. I think it would probably. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that we do that just for the minutes. Okay. I'll okay, second. Motion by Johnson, Austin, second by Nutter. Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor of uh, approving, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So next we get to dig in in our insurance re renewals. And, yeah. uh, and I'll start out with, I know there's a lot of documents that were kind of dumped into the folder for everybody. Um, I did that kind of last minute partially because of the weather and thought at least then people would be able to see it. I have packets for those who are here um, to take a look at. But Pam, is it, is it Kane or Cohen? She oh, might Pam, be on there? mute. Pam, can't hear you, Pam. So Pam is from, is, so we have three different insurances to take a look at today. Pam's from one of the um, agencies that's gonna go over any questions or have any explanation regarding, um, this would be the liability insurance policy. And so I'll give, oh, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that, I thought maybe you came up for a donut. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, right, exactly. Right, for, now that you mentioned right. it. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Niemeyer? I got yeah. all that. You got it there, okay, yes. Did you hear Pam sent a chat saying she can't hear anyone? Oh, and you all of a sudden the got really, really not soft. I, the audio is not working. I cannot hear anyone. Okay. You got kind of soft, too, for some reason. I did? Oh, oh now you're there you go. better. Now you got better. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. You want to try again, Pam? I'll send her a chat message because she can't hear anybody. Okay, and we can't hear her if she's trying to talk either. She's hmm. muted, it looks like. Is she? No, that's if you push it, it would be. Well, no, Pam, it's got the red cross on her microphone oh. sign. Yeah, oh. she's muted, on, at least on her end, and I don't know how you change yeah. that. Yeah, Pam, you must have your, your mute or connection I'm on mute. I'm telling her that she's muted because she can't hear us, anybody. Oh, yeah, that's right. And um, she may need to check her speaker connection. Yeah. I know when I joined, I had to click to join the audio by computer. So I wonder if she missed that. 
I don't know. Can uh, is it possible for the IT people to help her? They're they're I trying right now, actually. Okay, good. All right. They're trying to unmute her. She must. They must be able to see when she sends a chat. So. Oh, gotcha. Unmuting her will just let us hear her though, because I can mute so myself and Trimble still hear you guys. Unmute. Trimble County is on mute. Looks like. All right, so Pam is. Can, Are we on mute? A red dot on Trump. Pam, Pam has there. been unmuted, so hopefully she can hear us now. But we can't hear her. I'm yet. unmuted, but I still cannot hear anyone. She just sent that message. Hmm. Huh. Do you have any idea what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the weather, the power, there's tree branches are falling like crazy around here. <laughs> True. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm not very good at the technology stuff. Oh, there's a maybe. <clears throat> maybe she can hear us now. Yeah. There was just a line around her. Oh, was there? <clears throat> you know what? The when you're on uh, WebEx, the there's a green line around your picture, and that was on for a second. So I don't know. Gotcha. Mm. We don't have no picture of her at all. We had a picture of Heather for a minute, but we don't have that anymore either. Well, she just stopped video. You can do that. I'll disappear. See, I'm gone. <laughs> now I'm back. We prefer the other one. Ooh. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> the good thing I'm not there in person. <laughs> Um, well, do, do we want to take care of that? She said, I can hear now. Pam can hear now. But I don't can know. Can you guys hear me? It's Pam. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my we're goodness. Okay. I don't know what happened. But something worked. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Okay, we'll stick with this one then. <laughs> okay. We're on. We hear you, Pam. Okay. Um, Good. Sorry about that. That's right. And Pam, this is Rick. I know we communicated a little bit via email. So the committee, for some of the committee members, this is maybe the first time that they've had a chance to review this policy at the renewal time. So I don't know if you could just give a brief overview of what this policy all entails. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just pull up my, uh, my computer here one second. Sorry. Okay. What the um, liability policy covers, it gives um, liability to the county for um, the automobile, it's general liability, uh, liability coverage for like if somebody trips or falls there, um, it's liability for, um, um, one second here, my computer just did something weird, hold on, sorry. Um, it's providing liability to the, to the county for um, if they were to be, like if somebody was on the property, got hurt. Um, it also gives some professional liability. Uh, one second here, I just, it provides, I, uh, excuse me, I'm like, my, with this computer not working, my thoughts are all over the place here. Okay, what it does, it also provides the general liability and it provides auto liability that extends to the autos, like the commercial autos, like um, highway vehicles, any type of um, vehicle that we have insured. Um, the light you guys have would extend to the county's liability for the automobiles. And it also is for the, the um, liability for the employees and that um, in their job professional liability. And Pam, you provided a quote that included, or one with liability and then one that also included workers' comp, is that correct? Um, yes, we, I, I quoted um, two policies. One is if you had, we have a multi-package uh, discount and a full package discount. Um, right now, the county has liability and property with us. If they were to also bring over their workers' compensation insurance, they would get an, you know, a full package discount, which would be a savings per year of $20,000, total savings on the liability premiums. Sure. Okay. But we did, I don't, we did not provide you with a work comp quote, I believe. We did not do that, but we're giving you, you know, we can, we can still do that if you'd like us to do that. It's not a problem, but um, it's good to package everything together because you do get a discount for that. I believe we're self-funded for work comp, aren't we? Yep. Or self-insured, I should say. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and so the policy from last year was did not include work comp. Um, and I think I included la what we did last year um, at the very tail end of it as well, just as a comparison what the premium was. And then the premium mm -hmm. is on as a premium summary that gives the premium that would be this year for liability. I will I will also say that um, there are two, um, I guess, endorsements for lack of better word for the healthcare Correct. center that traditionally in the Correct. past they've, they've always signed a declination of those. And I reached out to Lori Glonert and she they are declining those again and she's already signed those. Um, so okay. the healthcare, healthcare center would not be um, included in this okay. as well because they have their own. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Those two endorsements are separate um, from the uh, from the from the uh, policy. Those are endorsements that we put. So you would just sign the rejections, like the nursing okay. home liability. That's an endorsement. So that's a separate premium, which indicates on that acceptance. And, and the deductible is ten thousand. Is that correct? Um, one second here. Sorry. Signed that one yet? My computers. I thought we were a little slow. So I'd recommend we keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on one second. I can tell you one second here. Sorry, sorry, I'm unprepared. No, that's right. Uh, without we're blaming, every, blaming everything on the weather today. <laughs> that too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see here. It is a my computer. Okay, it's a your liability limit is ten million. And the deductible is, one second here. My next screen, sorry guys. The deductible is 10,000. Okay. Just so you have a 10 million general liability with a 10,000 deductible. Okay, does anybody have any questions for payment at all? We have to make a motion to approve that 10,000 deductible. I would just to approve the renewal of the policy, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would, you think you got to be signed separately, it looks like. Correct. Yep. There's a number of things. And Krista has signed them in the past, and I can certainly sign on her behalf and send everything back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Jay, any thoughts from the group? <clears throat> questions? I have no questions. I would make a motion to approve this. As we have a second. <clears throat> I can't hear Heather if she's speaking. Oh, um, I just said that I second since oh. we're keeping it all the same. Okay. okay. I don't okay. have any. Yeah, sorry. We have, we have two seconds, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Any, any other discussion? Otherwise, I'd call the vote. All, right. all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? aye. <clears throat> Okay, motion carried. We will renew. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Pam. Um, one question for you, Rick. There was also the um, proposal for the crime coverage that we need to have signed and sent back also that I had sent over. Did you receive that? I don't recall seeing that one. Um, it may have so gone to Colin okay. Foster. Is that that one? We do that too. You know, that's, yeah, that's a, no, that was a different contact person I had. Um, can you resend that? I didn't. I don't recall seeing it. It may have gone to Krista. I just don't recall seeing it. Oh, okay, sure. I can resend that. Great, thank you. Not a problem. One second here. Hello. We're here, Ron. We're just, we're we're checking on something quick. We're checking on something quick. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just waiting for it to. Uh, that's all of us here. <laughs> just waiting. My computer's just so slow. I apologize. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, where did it go? Computer, don't go down on me. I'm sorry, my computer is just freezing here. I'm just trying to get it over to you. Thank you. Sounds good. Try it. Try it. <laughs> 
Sorry, here it comes. It's And I hope this isn't how my day is going to be. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, here, I'm going to send it. I'm, I don't know if I can do it. One second here. I'm just going to send it in a different email. Okay. Uh, apparently there's some tanks underground at the highway department. Must be. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. I believe it's every two yeah. or three years has to be renewed. We have to redo that too. Yes. Mm -hmm. That one will be a little easier. That one I don't have anybody lined up to talk. Yeah, mm. right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. Surprised we even have underground tanks anymore. Underground yeah, tanks I'm not sure what I know we pulled ours yeah. out of the farm a long time ago. 20 some years. Okay, I just sent it to you, Rick. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. About time to get this figured out. We're going to close session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Pam, did you need to address anything, Pam, with, this other... to address anything with this other? Um, no, what this is, is your um, governmental crime renewal proposal, and this is for coverage for theft for the, for the employees. Um, I, I, and I recall seeing last, last year's policy. Yes, this is exactly what you had last year's policy, correct. Okay. So we just need to have you, you know, to accept it, um, to buy coverage for you. Perfect, that sounds good. It is, the, um, you know, for employee theft. Um, the total premium on that, and I apologize, I don't have that in front of you guys. The total yes. premium on that is $3,312. And as Pam indicated, it covers theft indicated, from employees. I believe employees. elected officials are included as well, correct? Elected officials are included as well, correct? I uh, know elected officials are included under a position schedule bond. For the elected officials, they are not covered under the um, governmental um, crime policy. They are not. Perfect. Okay. Um, this is something that we've had in place for we've had time. Place. Okay. Yeah. Would someone like to make a motion? To, uh... I would make a motion to um, approve and continue this policy. Motion by Nutter. Look for a second. Second by Austin. Any other discussion? discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. Favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Motion carried. Motion carried. So do we have other insurance, so we have other insurance pieces insurance. we should deal with now, or what we, would you like to we do? We do, but maybe we can, like, so that doesn't have, have to hang out too long. So yeah, to yeah. Too we long. can be yeah. 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 It's yeah. not. Insurance isn't that interesting. <laughs> what I will say is we have two other provision <laughs> policies. Other provision one, the policies. individual is not available one, to have to attend to jump online and talk to us. And the other one, I don't have anybody lined up to talk about. It's pretty straightforward. That's the one we just did, actually. Well, at this point, then, I agree. Let's talk about Item number five. Um, number five. Um, Before you go on, can I say something? Can I say something? Yeah. There's um, it's There's really, um, it's really echoey, and I echoey, and I. Yeah, I don't know what so changed, but we made a change. I can't. Um, I can't. Um, I can't um, I Heather has the same problem. I can't really hear because Heather, there's so much problem. I can't really hear because there's so much. Yeah. So much echo. Yeah, we can hear it too. Yeah. yeah, we can hear it too. You guys are gonna probably. Now I can't hear anything. Now I can't hear anything. Is that any better? Is that any better? No. No. <laughs> it's the weather. It is a beautiful snow day, though. I'm very much enjoying watching my kids. <laughs> well, the echo's gone from Heather now. Yeah, maybe they fixed it. They fixed it. Oh, it's back. Oh, it's back. Yeah. Is it yeah. still doing it here? 
still doing it here? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Well, I guess we'll just have to live with it. Um, Very hit and miss. Right. Now the snowblower is out my window, so. To help the echo, Jeannie and Pam and Heather, um, if you could mute your microphones when you're not talking, I think you probably do that, but that might help. It's gone now. You're per oh, hey. I can hear you perfectly. No awesome. echo. Well, then I good. I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, so we were, we're going to go back to item number five. I'm not okay. sure if you guys understood that at home. Yeah, out of respect for Deb's time. So thank you. Um, First of all, um, I got to say Highway Shop did a beautiful job on the roads coming in, beautiful drive. Um, kids at home today are going to have fun making snowmen because it's heavy, wet stuff that's fun for snowmen and miserable for shoveling. Second of all, I just really want to say I, Rick is wearing so many hats and he has been so available to work with. Um, he and Lisa and Brittany are just doing phenomenal work and I just want to recognize that and um, I know you know it, but I just because this is a public meeting, I just want to make that statement. It's, I don't know how he's handling it, but God bless you for doing it. Um, so I the proposal, yeah. So the proposal in front of you is uh, not something we bring to you lightly. Um, we've had two. We uh, we've had actually since July three openings in child welfare social workers. We've been able to fill one as of this week. So that leaves two openings that have been opened. One was July, one was August, and one was October. When we have openings like that, that means that the rest of the staff have to pick up the work. And um, they've been carrying a heavy workload since August. We now have an individual uh, out on medical leave uh, for a few months, so there's more work with that individual. So the unit supervisors and I chatted on this, and while we aren't excited about this option, we feel we have to do something because the staff are really carrying very heavy workloads. The supervisors are doing a lot of case work. They're not able to be there for their staff. And so the challenge is, is that the labor market being what it is, is we have not been able to get good qualified social workers applying um, for our positions. I went to the Wisconsin County Human Services Association conference earlier this month Every county is dealing with this. This is not a Trumple County unique issue. This isn't because we're a small county and big counties steal from us, although that helps. The big counties, not us. Um, it, every county is struggling with this. And Jeannie can tell you about uh, seeing fewer people going into social work. And so we put our heads together and how can we get a bigger applicant pool and how can we get the work done? And so what we're proposing is that the two vacant social work positions become go down one grade and become a case worker instead and so that's the proposal in front of you it went to the human services board we had a good discussion there we're not doing this joyfully because we really do want to have qualified social workers on our staff but if you can't find them and the work's got to get done you have to find another way to do the work and so this isn't an ideal situation Maybe someday, years down the road, when the labor market changes, hopefully we could come back and ask for an upgrade, but I don't see that in the foreseeable future. And so we currently do have a caseworker position um, on the compensation structure, so that already exists. There's already an existing position description, so we aren't creating something new. We're just changing two positions to, um, ex uh, to another um, type of position. Jeannie, did I forget anything? No, um, just that I'm not happy about this, but I understand it. And to be clear, the case managers will have a four-year degree. I would be totally uncomfortable having someone doing, well, there are things you can't do if you don't have a four-year degree, but the degree will be in some human services related field. And it's possible um, Deb could get applicants who have a bachelor's degree in social work but have not 
taken the um, exam for certification or have been un unable to pass the um, exam. Uh, the reason I just don't like this is because social workers, we have as a group, have worked so hard to um, have the positions be professional, um, which is why back in the 90s, we went to licensure and certification. Uh, and really, when you come out of a social work program, you've done a field placement, you've un you understand the work, um, and you're well prepared. If we ha and I know that I'm just um, this is not what's happening, but I I don't ever want us to slip down the slope where we're going to hire non-degreed persons to do social work. It would set them up for failure because they're not prepared to do the work. So I would support this because within the job description, you have to have um, a four-year degree in a related field. Okay. Any other comments from the committee? Questions for Deb? Just a, just a note, and I think I brought this up at the Human Services Committee. I know <clears throat> there are a couple of counties, and I believe Rock County might be one, and it may have changed, but a few years ago, all of their um, social workers were case managers. So, and I don't know why they did that. The supervisors were obviously not, but anyway, it's sad. It's really hard. There are so many um, vacancies in in social work. So, it's a tough field. And quite frankly, there's a number of other counties doing this. This is where I got the idea of, of what are we going to do, and the other counties talked about it. And if you don't have to be a certified, licensed certified social worker, it'll give us a bigger pool of candidates to draw from. So, Right. I know I was at a Wisconsin Counties Association meeting, and the woman sitting next to me, and I'll, I'll not say where she's from, said they were so desperate in hiring social workers. They even had someone who failed the criminal background check and I said please don't tell me that I mean I don't even want to hear that that's like ah. but anyway we won't get to that level okay <clears throat> let's sure hope not uh, seems quite logical I guess unfortunate but it is the way the job market is now so um, any other questions or comments from the committee you approve this then um, Rick and his staff will be able to get this posted we'll take down the social work posting we'll put this posting up and uh, hopefully get somebody in here soon sure okay well I didn't turn a motion from the committee I'd make a motion to approve this request oh, yeah. John Beach a genie oh I'm sorry okay <laughs> but we'll give Heather the second so uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We will get them posted. So should we, thank you, Deb. <clears throat> should we go back to our insurance talk? And Pam, if you needed to go and do something, I, th <clears throat> I think we've covered all yours, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank, thank okay. you for, okay. for thank attending you for, today. For attending today. Thank you. And sorry again that I was late and having problems with the volume, but everyone have a good day and happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thanks, Pam. Thank Thanks, Pam. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. It's not looking like it. <clears throat> Yeah, it's back. Okay, I'll. I... All right, can you guys hear me? Okay. I guess just. I can. Yeah. <laughs> we had some feedback again, yeah, so that's, that's what I was wondering. It's the weather. Uh, um, so the next insurance would be the storage tank liability um, renewal. I don't have anybody to come on and talk about that one because I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, if anybody needs the documentation on that, I have it here in front of me. Um, but that is, there's um, two underground tanks at the highway department that every two years we do a renewal of the contract on. And um, so it's up for renewal at this point in time. 
the really the only question is there is the policy renewal premium with or without terrorism um, and historically we've done it without so if the committee wants to continue on as is um, we just it would need approval how much is this policy the premium or the could coverage? somebody explain what the terrorism part would that mean it, it, just like in a second explain what that means I mean, I know what terrorism is, but <clears throat> how would it, it affect? Yeah, and it literally means what it what you think it does is that if there's some act of terrorism on on our soil um, towards these particular tanks, um, then this would help cover those those acts and any damages thereafter. Okay. It does. Mm -hmm. Yep. The premium, the oh. here you go, John. Yeah. Premiums in the bottom there, there's two different ones. The only change to the policy, my understanding, is there's an, an, an endorsement entered that if the tanks are going to be removed, we have to notify them prior to removal. I don't see that happening in, in the near future. No. <clears throat> so any other questions from the committee or thoughts on the terrorism coverage? Hearing none, I guess I'd entertain no, a motion. I missed that, Heather. What did you say? I'd make a motion to approve. I'll, I'll second. Okay, motion by Nutter, second by Fritch. Um, any other discussion? Uh, is that, so is this for with terrorism or without terrorism? The motion at this point. I, I believe it's without because I was doing what we had done in the past. Is that correct? That's fair. We can go either way. I just want to be very clear. Okay. So, okay. So, the motion is for without the terrorism coverage. Um, any other discussion? If not, I just have one question. Do we renew this yearly? Every two years. Oh, every two years. Okay. Yep. So, we did not see this last year. Okay. So, um, I call the is vote then. All in favor. If there's with, is there a price change if it's with terrorism? I mean, I'm it's not about, worried about that. It's about two hundred dollars total uh, is what the whole difference is. Two hundred and six dollars or something like that. It's so, pretty minimal, but I don't know. Would terrorism uh, be like I don't know what happened in South Carolina where somebody shot out the power grid? I mean, if I, I don't know how I don't know how that would work. I guess I'm, I don't know. I, I don't know either. Um, it, it does, it's, yeah, probably clear as mud <laughs> as far as what it would cover and what it wouldn't cover. Uh, my gut feeling is that the terrorism would probably be directly related with the tanks. Right. But they're so, underground, right? All right, no, they're not underground. Or damage as a result of terrorism, you know, out okay. there, so... At this point, I think it's probably not. Yeah. So. Okay. So motion is motion for. As it, as it has been in the past. Okay. Fair enough. Heather, are you still a second for that? Yes. Okay. Right now, the motion is to not add it, Ron. It is really cheap for what it is. I, mean, I don't think it's expensive, but it's still up to the committee. So uh, does Ron, do we, I can't hear Ron. He must be on the phone. Does he think yes. um, we need to add it? Ron just thinks it's it's relatively inexpensive for what it would could give. Well, just to be safe, maybe I would amend my motion to add the $200 increase for um 
terrorism. terrorism. It seems weird to have it, but. Is it $200 for the year or per month? $200 for two years, actually. So I mean, it's, it is rel it is quite minimal in its cost. Inexpensive. Yeah, then I would add that to my second as well. Okay. So we have um, an Just amended. <laughs> yeah, because it is only Wait. 200 bucks for two years. So. I think. <laughs> it doesn't really say if it's for one or two years, but it must be. For it two. is yeah, in the, the bottom, front, in the one on the front page. page. Right bottom, that's where the premiums are yep. listed. It gives you, there's four options there, two one-year and two two-year options. Okay. So oh, the okay, yeah. amended uh, motion is to include the <coughs> terrorism endorsement. Uh, so it's both eight hundred dollars for two years. Correct, as opposed to twenty six. So Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Otherwise I'll call the vote. All in favor of proceeding with the terrorism package as well, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We have renewed that piece. Is there anything else we can do in open session before, so we don't have to... Do we have one more insurance piece or are we going to wait until after 10 for... Correct. He was going to be on just in case there were questions about the policy itself. So. Okay. Um, and, but yeah, he had a meeting until 10 o'clock. Um, we could, if we wanted to, we could do number um, 12. Well, actually, a lot of the stuff after the closed session are it's actually for discussion from within. From within the, yep. yeah, the closed session. So. At first, I thought we had an issue with the agenda, and then it became very logical. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. We could do the human <laughs> services update or ha human resources update. Yeah. That's number 13. Uh, department mm -hmm. update. Mm -hmm. I can, yeah. I can certainly give that right now. Yep. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. So, and I, I'll. I'll give a limited update just based on <coughs> my, my, my two weeks of being able to try and figure out what's going on over here. <laughs> and I'm being a little sarcastic, but um, I will say that we um, have 21 openings um, right now that we are actively recruiting for. Actually, I should say 19 were actively, two are, up, are in the process of being posted as we speak. Um, <clears throat> although yesterday we did have some um, interviews at the highway department, and so we'll be making an uh, offer on, on that position um, today. Uh, but anyway, so we're actively seeking 21 um, um, openings that we do have for the county. Um, just trying to think what else to, I guess in regards to the recruiting, I mean, that's the extent of what I have at the moment anyhow. So mm -hmm. any questions on the recruiting aspect of things? I know that was a brief one, but that's kind of what I have for an update at the moment. Well, it seems fair at this yeah. point. <laughs> um, Events, um, really the MLK Day coming up in January, um, that's still going on as planned. Um, Kayla is <clears throat> continuing to work on it and I'm helping out wherever needed with that, in that respect. Um, and um, that's gonna be a virtual event. Uh, more information should be coming out on that in the next week or two. Um, so we can start getting that squared away. If, I think everybody knows, but in case somebody doesn't, um, so MLK Day, um, mm -hmm. we, we close the courthouse down that day, but staff come, on, come here and they attend the training virtually. And then usually there's some time in the afternoon for staff to get together, talk about what the training things were and or just have a, um, a department meeting, those types of things. Um, so while the courthouse is closed, um, staff do still report um, um, <clears throat> to, the, to the office. Um, so that's really what I, oh, um, just a little bit with regarding the update. Um, we have brought my um, paralegal in and is helping out in regards to the, um, particularly in the recruitment aspect of things. Um, so she's been very helpful. Lisa's been a rock star in the things that she's need, been needing to do um, and getting things accomplished. So um, everybody's really kind of stepping up and, and doing a good job. So just wanted to um, point that out, just, um, just let everybody know that, so. That's very good. Well, thank you to all who are working on it, Brittany, Lisa, Rick, for all your efforts. So um, at this point, it is 942. We do not have our last person to discuss insurance. So do we wish to begin our I don't know, I, closed session? Or what, why don't we just take a 10-minute break and get this insurance over with so won't we? Almost 20 minutes. Cool. I say it'll be about 20 minutes. Oh, it's 20 minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the tough part. You know, I, I don't really want to waste 20 minutes either. I know. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, how about can we discuss it, and then if we have questions, we can oh, you know, sure. then decide yep. to. Well, I, th I think the ones you could discuss are like 12. Or no, he's talking about the insurance. No, the insurance. Oh, the insurance maybe there isn't any ma yeah. major questions. I can I can certainly at least give you the information that I'm aware of, and then if there are questions, we can certainly then talk we, to him then later. Then we deal with it. Yep, perfectly. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so this one is the property insurance. Um, so the last one was liability and crime. This one is property. Um, ironically, it's through the same company that, um, <laughs> that we did the last one with. And so the quotes for that, um, again, are... The, the documents are online um, in the packet there. I also have them present here. The question is really, oh yeah, that's right. He would, the individual who was gonna talk was gonna make some suggestions regarding the deductible and how that might save the county some money. I did forget okay. about that. Um, but they gave um, uh, quotes in regards to a deductible for 1,000, 10,000, or $25,000. I believe we currently have 10,000 as our deductible in this particular policy. Um, again, this covers any property, whether it be the buildings, the contents, um, uh, the vehicles as well. I know the other one was vehicles liability. This one's actually the physical vehicles themselves. Um, so those are the types of things that are covered under this one. Um, the, again, for those who are online, hopefully you saw the, the different quotes with the different deductibles. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of what I have to give. There were a bunch of um, informational sheets that were included with this one as well too if you had a chance to take a look at those. Um, those were a couple pages each but um, basically we just need to decide what deductible you want to do and, and that you want to renew it. Okay. And it was ten, the, what we've had in the past was $10,000? That is correct. Okay. And, the, and so he's Bringing us an option to consider a twenty-five thousand yes. dollars deductible to save some dollars. Yep, he said essentially what it is is based on our loss history or lack thereof. Um, he he is throwing out the suggestion of the twenty-five thousand dollars deductible because we don't have a lot of claims. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's assuming that we going forward aren't aren't going to have much either. Um, but that was based on our history. That's kind of a summary of what I think he's going to going to tell everybody. Mm -hmm. Is that a twenty-five okay, so thousand annual? I mean. Not just per single per incident. Per incident, I believe it's per incident. Yes, but that would be potentially could be more substantial then. But then things would have to really be right going wrong. Correct, exactly. And this and is just so I'm clear. What? This is for our um, buildings and so forth. All yep, of our the, property. Yeah, the physical items properties. that we have. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Vehicles okay. and everything. Is vehicles it, and everything. Is, mm -hmm. that, is the new construction covered under this? I should know this, but I don't think we've had to cover that yet. But don't quote me on that. Okay. okay. I don't think All we right. have anything to do with that until we take it over in I believe so. September, October. That's my understanding as well. Yeah. And then we'll probably have to revisit this whole insurance thing to include the new structure. Well, it's an annual policy anyway, so we'll review it, it again okay. next mm -hmm. year. How much of a okay. savings is there between the 10 and the 12, uh, 25? Oh, let me just check. What That's, is the premium? I was doing some math myself. There's about a, and it, I'm crunching the numbers just quickly here. I'm going to say there's about a, roughly a 10-ish thousand dollar difference between the premiums. Between wow, that's five, considerable. Between the 10,000 and the $25,000 deductibles. It's about 10, yeah. Mm -hmm. But is it cumulative? So yet the ter total personal property the bottom, the 107 on page one. Mm -hmm. So that would be a little over 10, right right around 10, 11 actually. 11 ish, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then, so then, but does the auto physical damage premium get added on top of that, or is that included in that? Let me just double check. Yes. That's what I was trying to figure out if this is cumulative or oh, if it's. Oh, sure. I see what you're saying there. Um, let me see above. I'm not saying that it's a big deal either way. Sure, just mm -hmm. but no, it's a good good question. I'm looking ab above on the on the first page, and I don't see auto on there. Auto in there. Yeah, but so I, also I think that's a separate policy then. But I also don't I, see. I think you're right, Colin. I think auto is a total separate policy. And I think that one is either the 53 or the 91. Is that what it looks like? I I well, Okay, yes. Yeah, it would be because it's option one, option two. That's yeah, what, that's what it looks you're like. right. So it isn't both of those would be one or the other. So I think that it would be both. Yeah, you'd have to potentially pr approve both. I'm trying to figure out what the real difference is between 
one and two on the auto side. It's forty thousand dollars. Right, exactly. But what is the difference in coverage? It looks like it has something to do with the age of the vehicles. Under yeah. option two, it talks about five years old or newer. But you would think that something like that would make it. Well, I guess it could make it more expensive. Five years old or newer. I suppose, yeah. Because the newer ones are probably more expensive, more expensive to repair. Yeah, have all those computer pr mm -hmm. components to it. And well. Uh, I farm and personal vehicles. Between my, my personal vehicle and work vehicle, my elders, what's your insurance there is the difference between age? What's mm -hmm. the type of vehicle? Mm -hmm. Let me just see what we did last year. I have that here as well. Mm -hmm. I'm really just trying to figure out why would we choose option two? Right. What would be the benefit to doing that? And that's what I was going to boil it all down. Wondering two, and that's what I'm going to see. I'm trying to find the one where you did last year so I can give you an idea. All right, so property renewal. Where's that? The deductibles are lower in. Option two. The um, last year you went with option one for the autos. I. So if we went and then it looks like, what was our deductible last year on autos? Is it five? Five. So if we went up to a ten thousand dollar deductible, we could save another eight thousand then. Correct. So total savings. If we made those switches, we're nineteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars approximately. Yeah. Any thoughts from the committee on deductibles? Because that's essentially what we're considering. Do we want to change our deductibles uh, to save eleven thousand dollars? We'd say go from ten thousand dollar deductible to twenty-five thousand. With an eleven thousand dollars savings, correct? Correct. That would be on all the personal property. Uh, buildings, contents, property in there. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It makes sense to me. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, I think I think it kind of goes along with our being self-insured with regard to workman's comp as well. Right. You know, right. take a little bit more risk in it ourselves. Yeah. Um. And the auto policy. I mean, I feel kind of the same way about that. Just thinking about the highway department because they're pretty. Pissed. They're most uh, at risk. Well, we could yeah. take the lower deductible on on mm -hmm. that right. policy or part of the policy right. yet. Yeah, between the highway and then sheriff's department, I imagine there is a fair vehicles. amount of potential there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see that a little more. Vehicles as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So any thoughts from the committee or? No, I'm on your side. I agree. Human Services and the ADRC, we're looking at getting some new vehicles because uh, although it's been hard to find new vehicles because some are really aging, but that's, you know, neither here nor there, but just a FYI. Are you guys there? Yeah, we're here. Oh, okay. It's just so quiet. Unusual. <laughs> well, it's because you're not here. Oh. Thank you. You're so funny, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, other other thoughts or what direction well, do we want to go? Just that I'm, I'm thinking if we can keep the deductible a little lower for highway and. For, and so maybe do. And law enforcement at least. Uh, no, it's a good idea. Yeah. Good good thought. So. Yeah, they're out going to hit some deer. They're out in all the weather yeah. and everything. Sure, so, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a really valid point I hadn't considered. <clears> so, <throat> so maybe are we look at option one with the lower deductibles on the auto policy part. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what you're thinking. Yep, I would agree with that. And then yeah, the option property. three on the property moves us to $25,000 yeah, deductible. You know, when you, when that's you sound good to you, Ron? Okay. Sounds good to me. Would somebody like to make a motion? Well, we're all agree with that. I'll make a motion. We do that with the auto policies. I'll second. Have enough. Okay. 
Okay, you got option, or option main, one second, the, option. One for the auto and two. Uh, and a $5,000 deductible. Yeah. And then on the property is it option number three with a 25000 Right. Okay. Any questions, clarifications from the rest of the committee? Otherwise, all in favor of uh, John's motion, say aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a sheep in there. Voice not sounds sure. so shaky. <laughs> 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 okay. Motion carried. So, okay. That I just have myself on mute in between. <laughs> 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 okay uh so that actually completes our insurance discussion it does okay very good um I, guys, so you don't even have to get on there. I can if, unless somebody has questions for him i can no. email at this him. point i don't i feel like it was all pretty self-explanatory yeah. okay, perfect. good discussion yeah, we'll do that so uh with that item number eight is closed session if someone would like to read that motion I'm moving on to closed sessions per Wisconsin statute 19.85 parentheses 1 parentheses C to update the committee and consider employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data regarding county personnel. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. We'll do a roll call vote. Austin? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Fritch? Yes. <laughs> Jeannie? Yes. Nelson, yes. All right, we are in closed session. We'll get a few minutes to shut things down. Okay, so we are we are back in open session. We'll, we will get back into our discussion here and begin with um, any actions on items you, taken guys. in uh, closed session. I move that we approve the actions taken in closed session. Okay, motion by Austin. Look for a second. Second. Second by Johnson. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. So uh, next up for discussion, we have uh, item 11, uh, discussion possible action regarding a job description for the administrative coordinator position and related issues. So uh, this was talked about briefly in closed session to lay a little bit of groundwork to the committee, but who, John, would you like to well, present the- Well, basically what's uh, cost us, we've been, uh, we've been going through, as has been mentioned in closed session, we've been going through HR director positions, uh, I think Jeannie mentioned five in the past less than 10 years. We've gone through five human resource directors. So it, the problem with it is uh, human resource director takes complaints from uh, directors, but being at an equal level as a director, she has no authority to really tell them one way or the other, discipline them one way or the other. So we wanted to get something with a little more teeth in it. So I've been talking to our corporate counsel over the past few years to, or, or the past few months to come up with a position that we have somebody over the directors. <laughs> Who is that? Jeannie is uh, oh. via phone now as well because she's <laughs> lost power. So. Oh, yeah, we have no power, so I'm on the phone. All right. I okay. probably don't either. I should probably go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, so anyway, we come up with a, a way that and wrote up these duties and a way to uh, have a a head over the department heads. It's somebody that department heads have to answer to, and take some of the pressure off of the HR director, or probably eliminate the HR director position entirely with the human or the administrative coordinator taking over the duties, and there shouldn't be a lot of duties because most of the handling we just talked about, getting uh, basically a uh, HR generalist, an HR specialist, and a, what's the other one? HR assistant. An mm -hmm. HR assistant, so, and then this, and the administrative coordinator will oversee that department too, so. Um, I, Rick has assured me you'd be able to do this, and so 
I don't know. I'll let you take over, and you can explain how you make it work. Sure. And I, I do want to do some clarifications. Uh, one of the clarifications is that the administrative coordinator would not issue discipline over department heads. That um, job would still lie with the oversight group, um, but the administrative coordinator would implement whatever those that decision is regarding um, relaying the message, coordinating how that's going to work, overseeing whatever the, the disciplinary action would be. So I, I, I think that's a very big distinction to make because if you're going to go the route of the AC doing the disciplining, you know, then you're essentially having an administrator with a different title type of right, thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I do want to clarify that for one. The other piece of it is, um, and I've been asked this by many people and I have given this a lot of thought, you know, obviously wearing a lot of hats and, and not, I don't want to burn myself out quite frankly because I um, enjoy doing a lot of things out in my free time. Um, there are a number of things that are currently in place that can make this work, assuming that we do a couple of other things that we've kind of talked about as well. You know, I have the assistant court counsel in my office, uh, you know, who is now taking over all of the court stuff other than child support. Um, and so, and then when departments shoot me emails with questions that they need answered, um, a lot of times this, I forward them on to him and he's able to help me in that route. So that, that is one piece of it. The other piece, obviously, is the child support agency. You know, that was recent. Um, I, I would like to continue doing that role um, just because I, I, I like the people I work with over there. Um, I think we work well together, and I still do their court stuff. Um, and so that, that part of it I, I would like to keep. The HR portion of it, that can work if we do the restructuring that there has been a little bit of talk about. And as John indicated, um, we, we revamp some job descriptions with regards to an HR generalist. HR specialist in charge of recruiting, and then the HR assistant. We already have the generalist and the assistant. The recruiter would be essentially a new position, but it would just absorb the recruiting um, duties um, that right now, quite frankly, is in and of itself a full-time job. Um, so if those things fall into place, the administrative coordinator job description does indicate in there that they would be essentially the HR director, but there would be modified duties. Um, the, it wouldn't be something where they would be, that wouldn't be their only or primary job. So that, that's the first step is as long as the HR realignment happens, that would be a, a key piece because without that, I don't think it's, it's going to happen to do all of those things. Um, so with those things all put in place, it, it's, fe it's feasible to do. Um, the other piece of it, of course, is for budgeting purposes, you know, I, I was envisioning it that part of the budget would be allotted towards child support agency for the, that director's position, part of it to the HR department for that position, but the bulk of it would come out of, I'll be honest with you, it would probably come out of the court council budget because what happens is the county board has to appoint somebody as the administrative coordinator. That's how that works. And so whoever gets appointed, in my opinion, that's where the budget would be impacted the most. And so those numbers, we still got to flush that out a little bit. Um, the AC job description is still with Carlson Detman. I reached out to them yesterday. Um, they said it takes two weeks. So sometime, that was a piece we didn't talk about earlier. That probably won't be back till sometime mid next week as to what that piece would look like. So the budgetary numbers, that still is something we got to take a look at um, and, and see how that would all play out. Um, uh, there's something else I'm missing there, forgetting. I'm trying to remember what it is. But in the event, I'll remember it in a little bit. But those are kind of some of the bigger picture item pieces to take a look at going forward. Like I said, the job description kind of speaks for itself type, type of a thing. So there are a lot of moving parts to it. Um, I think the way things are moving within the county, I think it can be done. It just, there still needs to be a few other items put in place. I was gonna try to text them, text them for their phone so they could get a copy of this, but that ain't gonna work. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. I cut off that's my right. phone, so. Mm -hmm. um, and didn't you say you felt that this would, could potentially actually save the county money too? Thank you, Heather, that's a good, good point. Yeah, when we were talking earlier, so, and I, I'll just, I won't go into great detail, but when it comes to for example, the um, Human Resources Department. Mm -hmm. So the budget for salaries in 2023 is $190,798. Um, and so if we look at what was budgeted for the generalist, what was budgeted for the assistant to existing positions, and I, I estimated what I think is a ballpark figure for a recruiter that comes in at $160,000 is what the wages would be for those three individuals. I'm. I'm relatively confident that any attributable salary for the administrative coordinator that would come out of the human resources budget would be less than the $30,000 that would hit the 190. So I believe the HR budget itself would be decreased. Um, I, I'll be honest, I think the, H, uh, the Corp Council budget may 
be increased to some extent because that's where the bulk of it would go to. But again, I don't know what those numbers are, um, but there would be something there that potentially would need to be looked at um, for um, child support. Um, again, that would be close to what it currently is, but we'd have to take a look at that as well too. So, but again, too, ultimately, I think it could in the long run save some money. And I'll, the other piece of it, quite honestly, and this is just me looking from the outside in, you know, an administrator would be great. I don't think the county is quite ready to take that step yet. This could be a step that direction without going all the way to an administrator. Mm -hmm. um, so this could be a feel for what would it look like or if you started going that route. Or, or, or it could also be instead of an official administrator, this could be an alternative, the next best mm -hmm. thing. Absolutely. Having the power without Mm. It's yeah. not all the same powers, though. It's either. not. Because it, with an administrator, we'd have to revamp what the job duties and responsibilities of respective committees are. With this, that those things wouldn't change. This, the committee's structure would stay the same. Um, it just would give kind of a more centralized, I don't want to use a figurehead. Uh, best of both worlds, in my opinion. You'd mm -hmm. still have... Did we, yeah. did you mention, I don't remember if this was said in open session or closed session, that um, the ultimate... Um, decisions would still lie with the committee correct yes right. they're talking about the disciplinary over the, the um, right, yes sure. department heads yeah. correct mm -hmm. yep that would still lie with the um, the oversight group um, that we have in our policy um, just the administrative coordinator would implement whatever those decisions are um, whether it be you know yeah whatever that are they would just oversee it and implement it and make sure it gets followed uh, through could you go over who what what the oversight committee does and how what members are on there what's exactly the oversight committee yep Perfect. Um, when it comes to department heads, what happens with our with our policy is if there is a complaint made, um, then the over, over is it oversight group, work group I think it's called. Mm -hmm. I don't have it in front of me. It consists of the um, county board chair, personnel bargaining chair, and then the oversight committee chair. Those individuals meet to discuss what the complaint is. They decide whether an investigation needs to be done. If one is done and the results are in, what is the consequence? Is there discipline or not discipline? That group is responsible for implementing whatever um, disciplinary action or investigation um, over a department head. So that's what our policy indicates. That mm -hmm. includes uh, corp counsel too, right? It, it, it includes um, advice, you know, if there's advice yeah, that's yeah. needed, but corp counsel and HR director are not part of that group per se. Yeah, okay. They're just there to offer input when questions are asked about what can or can't be done. Legalities of situations. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay. Any other questions, you know, for Rick? No, I just think it's a great idea. I'm, I don't know. Uh, I'll make sure as soon as you get power that you get copies <laughs> of this. It, or it should have been in your packet. Sure. Just, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's, it's in the packet. The just job description and everything is in the packet that was downloaded. Yeah. So are we waiting for a motion to approve this? Or what? Well, I think this is a two-part thing it potentially and because <laughs> I think we need to consider in a direction for the three positions within HR yep. confirm that we, we would like to move to this structure mm -hmm. least motion one yep. second motion would be to um, a resolution to move towards a administrative coordinator mm -hmm. position correct and I totally agree with you that and in that order. Correct. Yep. I would agree that the, the HR thing needs to be addressed first. And then if that, if that does pass, then in some form or fashion, you know, improving the job description and or moving it forward to the next, to the next level. Keeping in mind that we don't, we don't have the numbers yet for. Motion by Nutter to restructure to a HR assistant, HR generalist, HR specialists uh, for recruiting. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second by Johnson. Any further discussion, questions for the group? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carried. Just can I clarify just a couple of things on that from now what the next steps are? Okay. Um, I don't believe that the restructuring necessarily needs to go to the full board. I believe this committee has purview to do that unless you prefer it to. And then the next step would be is are you guys comfortable with us coming up with the job descriptions or do you want to see those before they, they go forward? At this point, and here's my, I'll give my opinion and the group can 
say they agree or, or think I'm stupid. But I think at this point, in the interest of time uh, and trusting in, in the staff that is in HR right now, uh, I think we can go forward. That's my opinion with you guys creating the job descriptions and posting them. I agree with you, Kellen. How about Any you, Heather? <laughs> What, you, we could, I didn't quite. He was just wondering, they were just wondering if the job descriptions for the uh, generalist recruiter and specialist that they're going to come up with a new job description. Do you want to see them? Or, uh, you, actually, they could be emailed out to this committee. Mm -hmm. I and, think emailing them out is fine. Okay. Yes. Okay. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I agree. Okay. So I think that's consensus on. On that. Yep. Thank you. I'd make a motion to have a resolution move forward to the full county board for consideration of reappointment of the county coordinator. And that's all I want in my motion, but my comment would be it was kind of crazy to have um, the county clerk have that position, especially with, especially now with all the <coughs> things going on with elections and what's happening in that office. I mean, it is, the county clerk is very busy and yeah. has no time to, uh, you know, we have big elections coming up in the future and a lot going on. So that's just my thought that that wasn't the best option when that happened years ago. Jeannie, just to clarify, are you also asking to incorporate the job description in that motion? Yes. Okay. That could be an attachment to the resolution, correct? Correct. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? We have a motion on the table I'll second regarding our administrative coordinator, second by Austin. Uh, any other discussion from the committee uh, before we more move forward on this? It's a big restructure change. But I don't know what other choice we have. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Personally. So. I like that it's going to go to the full board just so everybody's on the same page. Right. I anticipate discussion on this subject. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and worthwhile as well. So, with that in mind, we have motion made and second on the table. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We will move this on to the full county board for consideration, hopefully on Monday. Okay. You're going to drop base with, a resolution? I'll touch base with Paul and see if he can amend the agenda. Okay. Now, again, too, I don't know if I'll have the dollar stuff yet for by Monday, but I'll see what I can do. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Fair enough. We'll get a buck an hour increase. <laughs> We'll talk. Okay, so <laughs> totally uh, kidding. Totally kidding. <laughs> next we have item 12, discussion uh, or action to extend independent contractor agreement with Kayla here is based on staffing shortages. Yeah, so uh, um, I disagree with that 100%, especially here that Shannon's not coming yeah, to I the think, count. Yeah, and that was my primary my reason position. for doing that. And I did reach out to Kayla via email and we did talk about it. And um, because Shannon's not coming, I thought it might be helpful. I don't know that we'll get these positions filled before Krista's gone, unfortunately. Okay. Um, and so I think we may need some assistance after that point in time. Um, in speaking with Kayla, sh there is a request to increase the hourly rate if she's gonna continue on beyond the end of her term. I told her I would pass that along and um, then this committee can decide what they wanna do. Her current contract, I think, goes through the 11th or 12th, if I remember correctly. I think that's right. 11th or 12th, January. January. January, yep. Mm -hmm. Did she indicate as to what? Um, she indicated somewhere in the ballpark of 35 to 40, and she based that off of what the incoming generalist would have made. Um, so that, that, was, that was what her request was. She, was. she wasn't super clear on what amount she would accept or not accept, um, but she just wanted it to be considered before moving forward. I do know that, I mean, obviously, there's no benefits in, in mm -hmm. it, Correct. So it's yep. a, mm -hmm. I, I have no problem with that 35 an hour because we need it. <laughs> That's kind of precisely my opinion at this point. <laughs> yeah. So so do we? how long would the extension at this point continue? Do we have a date, or are we reevaluating re each month? 
I would say at least until the gen a generalist is, is hired, because um, I'll be honest with you, I've included on emails regarding the benefits, and it's pretty Greek to me. Yeah, um, so, um, so I would say that maybe leave it a little open-ended, but we can decide to, to end right. it when we feel uh, it's I mean, I think to do. at this Probably point, I'd say at more. least in the, through February. Sure. Mm -hmm. And evaluate each meeting. And yeah, yeah, I agree. We can put it on as an agenda item each, each meeting and, and yeah. go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to give her a little peace of mind, too, that this isn't mm -hmm. going to be a a one-month thing necessarily sure. right mm -hmm. um, yep. but yeah I think okay. that'll be agreeable so do we have a motion from the committee and a suggested hourly rate that we would like to make Three, five, I'd make a motion to continue her um, contract but I'm not sure about the just is yeah wage did we discuss that and I missed that or uh, 30, oh. she requested 35 to 40 and John's I said 35 if that works for you guys that's fine with me yeah that that sounds good to me yeah I, I'm are we okay paying 35 dollars an hour or what is the 35 figure 35 dollars yeah. an hour yeah it, and it's still capped at 20 hours a week okay and and she's not getting benefits either correct so no. it's just correct, correct. just wages okay yep. Yeah, with those terms of our department, the status, of everything, I think that we we're tell okay. Tell her thank you for it. staying on in this whole mess we're going through. <laughs> yes, I will, and I think irregularly. <laughs> we don't have to eat right now, so I'm cold. I'm gonna have to go build a fire in the wood stove. Mm. <laughs> well, you'll have time to do that shortly. So, yeah. okay. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second on that? Gotcha. Uh, we have a motion by Jeannie, second by Johnson. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, I will call the vote. All in favor of extending? Aye. Uh, aye. Say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. So we have covered our turnover, our mm -hmm. department update. Set the date for next meeting is the next thing on our agenda. Which, if That's we what, stick no. with... Is it the third Thursday normally? Is that what it is? And that is <laughs> January 19th. Right? Not to be a pain, I'm... Because Krista is back during a short period of time in January. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and take some time off while she's back. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that would be the time. Yeah, um, that and, is when she's here. Yeah, so if there's any... I mean, she can do the meeting if you want her to, but no. I just say, no. if, if you wanted me present, I, I'm going to try to take some time off during that during that week. So what are we talking about? Do we look at the 12th or do we look at the 20th? 12th might even make sense just for the fact that if we have something to post or something oh. to consider mm -hmm. to get things moving, sure. I would rather go up as opposed to later. I would agree. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Would, so are would, you setting the next meeting? Yeah, December 12th. Does that work for everyone? January. You mean January? Yep. Good for or me. January 12th? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, uh, 2023. <laughs> <laughs> January 12th. Would that work for you, Heather? At 9 a.m.? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's good. Okay. We will plan on meeting again on January 12th. I have nothing else on my agenda. Because we switched the because we switched the day, I'll just have to confirm that this room is available. But a room will be available, I'm sure. So yeah. we will have a meeting in a room mm -hmm. on the twelfth. Could have it in my office today if this is all it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. normally I like to come, but this snow day sure threw a wrench in it. So oh, sure. Yeah. I had to take the back roads to get to town because the Highway 53 <laughs> was closed with power poles down. And Oh, oh, boy. oh my goodness. Really? Like Tiffany yeah, I Dennis. hope we get power back here <laughs> soon. Dang. Had to go back around and come up through Hog Road and Sugar Coolie Road and come out in Coral <laughs> City to get here. I think they took the long way around. <laughs> I had to bring my wife to work, so I've been here since 7 o'clock. Oh, well. <laughs> Glad you're here. Yeah. You can take her to work. It's right, yeah, it's right here. So. Well, I think it's we're going to have trouble all day long because the snow is so heavy. Yeah. yeah. Branches yeah. were breaking off. I got some pines down or branches off of my yard. On the way here, I almost had branches fall onto my car. Mm. Well, be careful, so, trap all of you people. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think that will conclude our mm -hmm. December meeting. I'll see everybody in January. <laughs>